Word. Welcome to AHA, a human among humans. And we have a really an amazing human with us this evening, Nina McLaughlin, who has written, maybe we can show people, Hammerhead. And Nina, will you, why don't you tell us how this book began? Sure. I, um, I worked for about eight years at the Boston Phoenix, the alternative news weekly that um, unfortunately folded about this time last year. And um, uh, loved, loved working there. It was really an amazing place to work. Um, but my job sort of evolved over time. And I was ended up being the, the web editor, one of the web editors. And you started as? I started as a listings editor. So it meant sort of being in charge of, um, you know, inputting all the sort of events of the city into this giant database. Oh, my. Database. Oh yep. my yeah. um, and was sort of writing all along at the same time. And um, writing? Book reviews, restaurant reviews, um, profiles, Q and A's, a little this bit of everything. Right out of college. Yes. Is that right? Yep. Mine. That's right. It was my first job out of college, and um, I, um, I got, I was sitting in front of a computer and just got sick of clicking and staring at a screen, and um, decided in two thousand eight that I that I would that I would quit. It was just time. So I um, was there a moment that you remember that you decided I had enough staring you know, at the screen. Doesn't mean we don't love you yeah. staring at this screen now. Right? I um, you know, it was it was a it was probably a year long process of sort of getting the courage up to sort of make make that leap. Um, there was sort of a, a task that we had to do. It was um, this list that we did online. It was the it was the unsexiest men list that we did. Sort of this joking thing to get page views on the website and it was just it just felt bad for the soul so, so what was the example of so you know there was maxim magazine is this magazine that um does the hundred sexiest women so it was kind of a satirical answer to that you know feature in their magazine um and it was featuring not not based on attractiveness for the men but people who were you know racist politicians, uh, violent athletes, uh, sort of, you know, unsavory characters. Oh, wait, that was the list exactly, of them. Exactly, exactly right. violent athletes. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Sounds interesting yeah. to laugh yeah. to me. But. <laughs> yeah. um, and so it was just, you know, it was just a tedious sort of chore, and it was sort of got, got under my skin. Yeah, and you had to look, you had to look at all the violence. Oh, yeah, exactly all right, the exactly was... right. Um, and so decided to leave, and this was 2008 in the economy at that point was in in the toilet that was um, very yeah, very, very brave yeah well brave or yeah that's one word stupid yes, is another word very brave did you talk <laughs> it over with people or did you, you know just, i'm out of here you know i had i had talked it over with some people you know i think everyone knew that i was i was itching to leave you know and itching to do something else um and it really was this kind of this slow process of figuring out all right can can I do this? How am I going to figure this out? How am I going to pay rent? How, how am I going to get health insurance? Um, and sort of finally just sort of putting my hands up in the air and sort of saying, all right, here we go. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hope for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when you have a task, yeah. that's a little bit too much. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> that it might be a gift. Right? It's exactly that, right. That list was a gift. It's true. It's true. And the, you'll see what happens now. And the fear is a gift, too, I think. Mm. Um, and so, you know, there were definitely many days where I felt like, oh, God, what have I done? What have I done? Um, but about six months later, I was, I was scrolling through Craigslist looking, looking for jobs, and I saw a posting that said, Carpenter's assistant sought women strongly encouraged to apply. And, and it was as though it was... Um, you know, blinking and flashing lights, my heart started to beat faster, um, and I thought, "Oh my gosh, this is it! This is exactly what and I've been waiting no for." And you have no experience. No experience. No experience. So how would you, well, how would you explain why you were so excited? I think that there, you know, as I was sitting at my desk um, at, at the Phoenix, you know, looking at the internet all day, it, there was this sort of vague crave to do something that had more to do with tangible reality, things yeah. you could touch, you know? Yes. And I didn't know what that meant at the time. You know, I would think like, all right, I want to do something with the reality. What is that, you know? <laughs> um, and this and this posting seemed to exactly answer that that call. Um, so I, I sent an email, um, got an email back sort of saying, you know, there've, 
been 300 responses in the last 18 hours. But your hours. email did tell them you have no experience. Yes. Oh, yeah. I explained. Oh, I have no. Straight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No experience. Very curious. Because it would be it would be a bit embarrassing if oh, they yeah. thought you had an experience when you showed up. Yeah. yeah. No. No. I was very yeah. very honest about wow. that. Wow. Yeah. Um, Even though you wanted this so much, yeah. you didn't take a crash, <laughs> a, a, a one day crash course in carpet. No, no. It's, it's true. Um, Why? And I, you know, and I, 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 I figured there was no chance, you know, saying, you know, I'm very curious to learn this. I didn't think that that would be a, you know, a even though you thing. wanted it so much. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> this is a lesson for all of us. Um, mm. And so. Um, and so got an email back from a woman. She said, please explain a little bit more about why you want the job. So I did that. And oh, when you're um, a good writer, so that would Yeah, so that, I, that was the only thing yeah. that I could do. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so I explained a little bit more what about- did you tell, What did you say? Do you remember? I said, yeah. I said, um, you know, I have spent the last years um, working at a newspaper. Um, and the satisfaction of putting together sentences is something that I find uh, really amazing and powerful, but that um, learning to build something is also something that really appeals to me. Um, and, you know, I, I am ready to do hard work and ready to learn. Um, Boy, we, I would hire. Oh, yes. gosh, that's nice. That's Why? Nice. Um, and then. Um, so if you're looking for a job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the way, this is one way, a job you have no qualifications for but if you can write simply and honestly yeah, yeah simply and honestly yes. i think that was exactly yeah. it um and because her her the tone of her email that she was explaining what the work was was also simple and honest so it was sort of matching what she had put out there as well um so i ended up getting um what was sort of ended up being a half day interview um she took about six of us one at a time and we spent um we spent a day working at this beautiful house in Cambridge on Brattle Street, um, tiling a tiling a bathroom floor. Just you and her. Just just Mary and me. Exactly yeah. right. And um, and you know as we were setting up, you know she sort of said, "All right, you cut all lay," which of course made me panic because I'd never used a tile saw before or, or really any tool. And uh, and Mary's advice to me was. You know, don't worry about it. Just go slow. And so, um, were you scared? Oh I yes, was so scared. I, I was, would hurt myself. Yeah, yeah, I was scared. It was loud. It's it's a wet saw, so there's there was you know tile dust spraying and, no, I and don't water. Know. Yeah, I do not know. Yeah, so I guess and in, you did not know either. No, I had no idea. Wow, <laughs> wow! Is there hope for all of us? Not only being honest, yeah, and, brave, and going yeah. for what you want. But in this really, I mean, if this was a major motion picture, it would be like, you know, Raiders of the Lost. This is a very frightening <laughs> moment. It's true. It was all it takes very a lot of a lot of courage. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, my I'm sure my hands were shaking. Well, yes. Um, but you know, and just, you're working with your possible yeah, boss. Yeah, yeah. Oh my, I'm um, all alone. Also, yes. Yeah, and so... Um, are you chatting when this is, or are you just totally... Well, during the actual cutting of the tile, I was concentrating very, very yes, hard yes, on the tile. because your um, hands could yeah. cut. You know, I mean, yeah, the tile saw, in fact, actually is a little bit less dangerous than sort of the wood saws, which yeah. have these very, very sharp teeth, toothed blades. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot that can go wrong. Um, so, um, yeah, and so I uh, spent that day and um, ended up miraculously getting the job. Well, tell, no, but tell us how this happened. You, she, how she says goodbye to you. And... Sure, sure. So, um, so at the end of that day, we, we were back in her driveway and, um, and sort of, you know, I have tile dust in my hair. I'm exhausted. She hands me $70, which was $10 an hour, uh, which felt like a ton of money. Did for you know you day. were going to be paid? Yeah, she had to oh. explain that the right. interview process you know that we she would pay us for She's our a very time. very nice woman very yeah. generous yeah. very generous very fair and um and she said all right take care and and standing there i just i felt like take care those are two words that you say to someone that you're never going to see again that it was just sort of that's yeah. it you know mm -hmm. um and went home and just sort of felt tired and discouraged and nervous and felt like you know i had blown i'd blown the whole day and there was no chance of getting hired and um, you would think why you, you just thought you were too inexperienced too or? inexperienced um that of course she would be able to find someone yes, who knew yes, how to do which she could have. yeah yeah um um and so the next morning she called and she told me the job was mine why if do I you think she, she 
decided that. You know, we talked about that um, later on. I think that I think that partly one of the other women that she interviewed was was texting all day. Um, Partly, another woman, you know, wasn't strong enough to lift 15 pounds, and you do need to have, you need to be athletic. You need to be able to sort of lift these heavy loads. Um, one person lived too far away for it to be convenient. Well, lucky you. Yeah. So, so I mean, it, was, it was not choosing you, but by default. By default, though she did, she did eventually admit that it seemed like I had a good head on my shoulders. Oh, I just, so, just sensible. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is hope. Yeah. I've always wanted to do. I'm um, just too. Not, unlike me, now I'm too greedy and I want to <laughs> read and write too much. But this is, I change things. And this is the book. Yes. By the way, it's what a. How'd you get the title? The title was was of my editor's choosing. The, he came up with oh, it. Oh, the making of a carpenter, yes. hammerhead. That's right. Nina McLaughlin. Yep. And you can just look at this at Harvey Bookstore. That's right. And, and probably buy it. yes, and probably online at Amazon. You can open it. Yep. And see it, Hammerhead by Nina M A C Mac. Lachlan, which is Scottish, you yep, tell me. Yep. What does Lachlan mean? Do you know? Uh, well, Loch, I know, is um, oh, lake. It's, it's a lake. Oh, yeah. So, so you're Nina from the lake. Yeah, great. Yes. Okay, so uh, so they chose Hammerhead. Yeah, so I was, you know, I was actually, I wasn't sold on that title at first. It took me a while to warm up yes, to I, it. Yes, I, yes. Um, uh, but there was no kind of lightning bolt that struck me or anyone that I talked to about it that we can't, you know, there was no other sort other of. Other title. Yeah. And this was their design. Uh, that's it's, right. It's, uh, it's, it looks like a political party. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, a hammer and sickle is, yeah, it's is true. the, this is a hammer and screwdriver. It's not quite a screwdriver. Yeah, it? screwdriver, yep. That is a flathead, yep. Or the flathead yep. shows revealing my, um, and this is wood behind it. That's yes? right, yep. And, uh, and somehow a uh, ribbon around the, and it, got, it has wonderful things that be, Andre Dubois said Dubuse, something. yeah. Mm -hmm, yep. what did he, would you read this first? What did he sure, say yep. about this? Yep. Not many of us find the courage to follow that small voice inside us to our true work, especially when that work lacks social status and health benefits and financial stability. But here, in this wonderfully assured debut, Nina McLaughlin compellingly chronicles having done just that. A leap of faith that brings her more deeply into her very core, where the stakes are high, but the potential for lasting joy is even higher. Lucky for us, McLaughlin's evocative prose is just as plumb, level, and true as the wood structure she ultimately learns to build. This is a lovely and important book. Wow. <laughs> well, and that, with that as an introduction, we, have, we haven't gotten, we, we know how you be began the job. And you started writing a blog, yes? That's right, that's right. When, how, when, how soon after did you start? I think probably, you know, I started taking notes almost immediately. I mean, that was sort Good of- Good for you, yeah, that was, that's what you do. That's how I know how to learn, you know, all, yeah. in, all in, in high school and college and as a journalist, you know, you're constantly kind of taking notes. And so as I was having so much information poured at me that I had no experience, the way I knew how to how to you know remember it and know but it not was on the job it. I imagine sometimes I would oh, sneak yes? off into oh, the bathroom wow. you know? um, um, and, and then when did you start making it a blog for other people probably about a year into it I think oh. um, maybe a little bit more a year and a and half and you just told friends that can be yeah you know I sent out an email and said hey I'm keeping this blog I'm sort of writing about this this wild new carpet and what is the blog called is it it's, still, is it still yep, alive yep I still keep it it's called Carpent Tricks um, and the website is uh, carpentricks.tumblr.com. And tricks is T R I X? That's right, yep, yep. Oh, because that's a boy, is it carpentrix? Yep. Is that a woman carpentrix? Yep, exactly right, yeah. Carpentrix, yep. wow. Yep. Um, yeah. Well, it could be a compliment. People might not know, it might be dangerous. Yeah. You know you're a carpentrix. <laughs> yeah. Gee, <laughs> would we be brave enough to say that? <laughs> okay, so. Um, so you're working on the job, you're starting a blog, and you're learning. Yes. And, and you're liking it. Yeah. You're really liking yeah, it. Yeah, I like it. I mean, there were days, of course, that are, um, like any job, horrible and boring. You want to tell us a horrible day? Oh, sure. Um, you know, there's some of the work involves, my least favorite thing to do is the, the demo work. So it's sort of smashing down walls and a lot of stuff needs to get taken apart before we start building. So ripping up floors, um, smashing down structures, and it, 
for me, I get quite nervous about the stuff that we're breathing in. So a lot of the dust. Yes, I love. I actually had. I actually that's something I was capable of doing. And yeah. loved it. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. Yeah, there's something. It's definitely satisfying taking a sledgehammer to a. Bam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, it's powerful. Mm. Um, but I get I get nervous about yes, the I stuff that yes. we breathe we in. Yes, we had masks. Yeah, but yeah. Still, yeah. Um, but so you know those days where it's where it is just kind of loud and dirty and it's just hauling trash bags full of, you know, um, plaster and, and wood. Um, and those days can be a little less, a little less enjoyable, mm -hmm. a little less satisfying. Yes. Um, and, it, and Mary is always working along with you doing this or not? Yep, you know, sometimes it depends. You know, sometimes she will be doing the exact same thing. Sometimes she'll be doing one thing, I'll be doing something else. But it's else. just the two of you, really? Yep. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Yep. yep. Okay, and, and one of the, the days that you really love? Sure. Um, we were, um, this last summer, we were building this beautiful 800 square foot deck um, for a, a Mass Audubon property, actually, down in Norfolk, Norfolk, Mass. Um, and, and it was just, it was beautiful. It was huge, designed by this, you know, this, this sort of great architect. Um, the wood that we had used was beautiful. It was black locust, which came from Western Mass, it had just been milled. Um, and black locust, actually, if you shine a black light on it, it glows in the dark, um, which is a neat a neat fact, I think. Wow. Um, and so it was just... I mean, For a deck, that's amazing. Yeah, it was neat. Wow. Um, so it was just, I think, the the location, the the actual shape of the of the structure, um, being outside, um, it was just, it was so amazing. Oh, and, I, and I think for a lot of the jobs that we do, we don't get to go, you know, we go and do a job in a person's home and we never get to go back and well, see here it. You can go. Exactly right. We can all go can to all where, go. where yeah. is this? this? In, in Norfolk, there's a, there's a sanctuary called Stony Brook Sanctuary. Um, and go at night. <laughs> yeah, go at night. Bring your black light, shine yeah, it. Yeah, wow. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that sounds very, very gratifying. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was, it was a really, it was a wonderful, wonderful project start to finish. For sure, um, but like, but like any job, you know, there's there's projects and there's days and weeks that go by that you know some are more satisfying. Than and there's a certain kind of bond between you and her after these years. Absolutely, yes. Different than you had at the Phoenix between people. You know, it is it is sort of a different thing. I think I I really loved the people that I worked with at the Phoenix. There were a bunch of very funny, smart, curious weird great writers and editors um and it was a pleasure to go into work every day with them um with mary it's you know it's it's the two of us all day um there are days that go on that we talk every minute of the day and there's some days where we don't say barely a word to each other um and i think that there's there's a closeness we both you know we know each other pretty well and um and a comfort you know i mean we can spend a lot of hours chatting or not chatting and and i know for me a great deal of respect um for her and her ability as a teacher um especially as someone who she had to teach a lot to you know so it's been it's been a great a great relationship and it feels a little different even the way you're describing it than with your colleagues yes. which you're not teaching each other exactly and this is certain a certain kind of gratitude yeah absolutely and it's a boss so yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah a mentorship almost yeah. you know my yeah she must be proud of you too then oh i hope so i hope so i'm proud of the book i think so yeah she she seems she seems pleased i was definitely the most nervous for her to read it of anyone you know because yes. she's she is a the main person in it really um and so i was i mean nervous is actually understanding i was terrified um but she, she was, she has, she read it, and um, she eventually, um, she sent me a text saying, you know, I would, I would, I would call you, but I would probably be crying. Thank you so much. Wow. Yeah. Um, and Mary is not a crier, you know. Yes, so it was, no. um, it was a special, especially mine. I was so, so, so oh, relieved, my. so relieved. Um, so she's been. I'm so grateful for her because she has been so supportive of the project and, and the book. Um, yeah. So how would you describe the difference, this is a hard question, you can pass if you want to, but the difference between this physical work, because you, you said with sentences you're putting them mm. together too, mm. or you're putting these sentences together for Hammerhead by Nina McLaughlin. So what would be the, and you do it the same day sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. So what is the perhaps physical difference in your the feeling in your body mm. when you're working on carpentry and you're working on words mm, mm. that's a great question i mean the physical difference that's that's 
that's a really interesting question. I think that um, the sort of physical satisfaction that comes after a day of, let's say, building a deck, for example, um, you know, to come home dirty, covered in sawdust, you know, maybe with a splinter, um, so hungry, so tired. It's one of the best feelings that there is. Wow. It really is truly, like, I don't know kind of a better... Thanks. Love making with the, with the yeah, right. sawdust. Yeah, right. I understand right. well. Um, and the and the after a day spent writing, it's I I find that I'll come come away from the computer screen kind of feeling yes. pinched and a little tight and crankier and like just kind of tighter wow. And hard to relate to what's yes. around. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, this you can. Is it more easy after? A Absolutely, you're exactly right. Oh. This is it. I mean, it's like I feel like I come home from carpentry. I can I can interact, you know. Oh. And, and it's after writing, it's kind of this like. Yes. Who are these? Yeah. People? When is reality? Yeah, exactly. I've exactly. been writing about it. This exactly. Is now, yeah. Oh, well, that's lovely. Yeah. Well, we have still five minutes, and maybe um, we should hear just a little bit, and I'll interrupt. Sure. You can pick whatever you would like to, sure, to share sure, with us. Sure, sure, um. sure. Hammerhead by Nina McLaughlin. Sure. So the section that I'm going to read here is 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 from that that last uh, the last little bit of that that interview day that I was talking about with the where we were tiling the bathroom in in Cambridge and um, and here Mary is um, taking a quick uh, break to have a cigarette. I looked at the section of floor we'd completed so far. Rain hit the window and pattered on the roof above. Footsteps on the stairs and an old man appeared. He looked a hundred years old with a long white beard and long white hair tied back in a ponytail that hung between his shoulder blades like the tail of something that belonged in snows. He wore light hammer looped paint splattered pants and a white t-shirt that hung from his shoulders like a sheet. He carried a paint can and a brush, a dull canvas drop cloth under his arm. He set himself up on the opposite side of the room by one of the dormer windows. Good to see women on the job, he said. I didn't know what to say. It would be clumsy to explain that I wasn't really on the job, just trying out, had only been on the job for a couple hours, that I didn't know how to read a tape measure. It would be clumsy to say it was good to see a hundred-year-old wizard on the job. <laughs> Thanks, I said. It's good to be on the job. Wow. When Mary returned from her smoke, we kept working without much talk and finished laying the tile. They needed a night to set before they could be grouted, so we were done for the day. The combination of concentration, newness, of not knowing the rhythm of the day made the minutes swift. Three to four on a Tuesday afternoon at your desk, when all you're doing is murdering the minutes, it feels like torture because in the back of our brains, what we know is these hours are our only ones. They are finite and will be finished. A girl I knew once went around to all the guests at a party and told them, one by one, this is your real life, you know. This is your real life. What a thing to be reminded of and how easy to forget. I like the way the tiles looked on that floor. Yeah. So I imagine you can see yourself continuing this dual life yes writing yes. and because they, they contribute to each other I absolutely think. they complement each other really well and I feel lucky to have both um, I you know after after a while sort of doing the carpentry work I'll start to get this itch to get back to writing and vice versa after after some days spent writing I think I God, get me back to the deck or get me wow, back to the bookshelves. Wow. So they do, they do pair up really nicely. And now, I, oh, sorry. No, no, yeah, and I just, I feel lucky to have both. Now, how does the writing influence the carpentry? Gosh. I mean, is it different now that you, because if you're writing it, if you have a certain consciousness, I'm going to turn this, or maybe you don't, but somewhere it's inside, this is going to turn into words. Mm. You know, I, one of the things that appeals to me about the carpentry work is how far away it is from words. So yeah. that I'm not, you know, when I'm when I'm using the hammer, when I'm, uh, you know, or the nail gun or the drill, I'm the words are gone. They, oh, so you're not thinking of yeah. writing about this. You know, I mean, occasionally, but that'll be not in the moment that I'm working. Yes. And that's that's one of the great pleasures of it for me is this sort of this this removal of, of language. Yes. Um, and that's I mean that's part of the reason I'm so grateful to have it. I have a song that begins. To get out of your mind, get into your head. Yeah. So it'd be good for hammerhead. Yeah, exactly. So to just get into your physical. Yeah. 
And when you're writing about it, that must be a, a, a somewhat challenging to take this nonverbal mm. time and turn it into, and like a carpenter mm -hmm. in some ways, mm -hmm. but turn it into words. Yep. Um, in some ways, that was the biggest challenge of the book. I didn't expect it. Um, sort of putting words to these actions that we do without language, yes. you know? I mean, how do, how do you describe using a hammer in a way that's vivid and accurate and compelling? And who would be um, interested? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I picked exactly. up a hash. So how do you do that? Yeah, well, I mean, you'll have to see. Oh, <laughs> yes. And you're going to be giving a reading soon. Yes? That's right. Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock at Porter Square this Books. This is this Wednesday? This yes. Wednesday, yep, yeah. April 15th. And that's in Porter Square, that's yes. That's right. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah. So we have um, one minute to say goodbye to the, the audience. Is there anything that you would like to say to all of us oh, about gosh. carpentry and more, or really body and mind? Sure. You want to say yeah. That. I mean, I guess I, I again sort of would sort of say. I mean, it's been six years that I've been doing the carpentry work now, and I I do feel like having a combination in your life that you do have kind of something that you're doing with your brain and something that you're doing with your hands is really, it's. And regardless of what it is, knitting or, or, or gardening or cooking, um, something in combination, I feel like it's a, it's, a, it's a really excellent way to live your life. Wow, and that happy note, Hammerhead <laughs> by Nina McLaughlin. May we all be able to marry with our heads and minds um, doing things with our hands. Thank you thank very, you. very thank much. You. Thank you. Lovely having you. Lovely thank to you be for here. joining.